Continued instability in the Middle East, and the alleged culprit is not the West's usual fall boy. The Israeli strikes were similar to a declaration of war, and our country has a right to defend itself. A series of attacks, Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, and people are pointing the finger at Israel. At least they owned up to that last attack. Usually accusations that Israel's attacked another sovereign nation are met with silence from Tel Aviv. But this time, Benjamin Netanyahu justified the attack, claiming Iran was targeting his country with explosive drones. According to him, the situation was kill or be killed. If someone rises to kill you, rise up and kill him first. In a complicated operation by our security forces, we determined that Iran's Quds Force dispatched a special unit of Shiite militants into Syria to kill Israel's on the Golan Heights with explosive drones. With great determination and in perfect Israeli army operational and intelligence fashion, we preempted them and thwarted this attack. Netanyahu often harps on about the supposed dangers of Iran, but when it comes to the facts, the Islamic Republic is often on the receiving end of military violence. About a year ago, Israel struck nearly all of Iran's military structures inside Syria. It was the country's biggest assault since the beginning of the civil war. Back then, Netanyahu played the very same preemptive strike card. Whoever hits us, we will hit back sevenfold. Whoever prepares to strike at us, we will act to strike at them beforehand. This is what we have done, and this is what we will continue to do. The never-ending demonization of Iran might have made Israel its share of enemies in the Middle East, but in the West, it's reeled in some powerful allies. This is 40 years, 40 years of malign behavior. So whether it was uh, seizing a British tanker that was in international waters, or shooting down an American UAV that was also in inter international airspace, or assassination campaigns in Europe, or trying to kill an ambassador here in the United States, Iran has this long history of malign behavior. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, it was like we we had we had entire we had entire training courses. Uh, it. Uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. Iran had its tankers detained, its airspace violated by drones, its military installations outright bombed, all by the U.S. and Israel. The Iron Dome missile defense system deployed, forces boosted and on high alert. And to understand why, you have to look at the last few days. In Syria, an Israeli airstrike on a base operated by Iran, planning a major attack. And two members of the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia killed. Then an alleged Israeli drone strike on a Hezbollah media center in Beirut. It's all led Hezbollah to make televised threats for revenge and the Israeli Prime Minister today to respond with this. I heard what Nasrallah had to say. 
My advice to him is to relax. He knows perfectly well that Israel can defend itself well and pay back its enemies in kind. I want to tell both him and the state of Lebanon, which is housing his organization, which wants to annihilate us. And I also say to Qasem Soleimani, be careful with what you say, and moreover, be careful with what you do. Our defense correspondent Jonathan Regev spending the day on that Israel-Lebanon border. Jonathan, how's the Israeli military preparing up there? Great tension, Rita, as you mentioned, on behalf of the Israeli military. An order coming to the forces operating right on the border fence to refrain from driving along some of the roads that are exposed to a Hezbollah fire. Israel remembers very well how in the latest round of escalation here, here in this area four and a half years ago, two soldiers were killed by Hezbollah fire coming from the other side. That also came by, back then uh, in response to uh, an Israeli attack in uh, Syria. Uh, and it happened, uh, those two soldiers were killed in a car driving right along the border fence, completely exposed to Hezbollah fire from the other side. So uh, Israel perhaps expecting some kind of response for the others from the other side. That is why the forces are on very high alert. That is why we saw Iron Dome batteries deployed here in the area. The IDF is ready for any scenario that may come from the other side of the border. Jonathan, even if both sides don't want a full-blown conflict, history has shown us that that doesn't always mean that'll end up that way. Is there any sense of what it'll look like if this does become more volatile? Because we're talking about Hezbollah and Iran-backed Shiite militia, but they are also part of the Lebanese government. That, that is true. On one side, they get their orders from Iran, but let's remember uh, Hezbollah is also a political party, part of the uh, uh, Lebanese parliament, and and uh, the Lebanese public clearly does not want a, a full-on war with uh, Israel. That is perhaps why we heard comments today coming from Hezbollah officials saying we will react to the fact that two of their people were killed in this uh, Israeli strike on Syria on Saturday night, but they want to react in a way that will not drag uh, uh, the, the, the region, their nation, to war, uh, but uh, if Israel contained that event which we spoke about uh, four and a half years ago, we just heard the comments from Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu a warning Hezbollah and warning the Lebanese state. And that is an uptick uh, as far as, as Israeli rhetor rhetoric is concerned, because if we go back to 2006, the big war, the second uh, Lebanon war, it involved Israel and Hezbollah. Israel refrained from attacking the Lebanese state. Now, uh, judging by the comments uh, from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, it might be otherwise. Hezbollah is burying its dead in its stronghold in southern Beirut. Two of its fighters were killed in Israeli airstrikes in neighboring Syria on Sunday night. The Lebanese armed group is promising retaliation. It has told Israel to be ready for a response. Its leader, Hassan Nasrallah, also threatened to shoot down any drone that violates Lebanon's airspace after what he said was an attack by Israeli drones in Hezbollah's area of control in the Lebanese capital hours earlier. If we remain silent on this breach, it will create a very dangerous road for Lebanon, repeating what is going on in Iraq now. In Iraq, the Iranian-backed Popular Mobilization Forces are blaming Israel for a series of unexplained attacks on their bases and positions in recent weeks. The latest was on Sunday night, close to Iraq's border with Syria, which killed a number of fighters. U.S. officials and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have hinted at possible Israeli involvement in those strikes. Israel, it seems, has opened a new front. The Israelis are saying they're ready to open war on three fronts, Beirut, Damascus and Baghdad. We can't ignore the political side, however, which are the upcoming Israeli elections. The Israeli army says its airstrikes in Syria stopped an attack by Iran's Revolutionary Guards. It released surveillance footage of what it said were members of the Guards preparing a drone strike against Israel. Israel has repeatedly hit what it says were Iranian targets in Syria over the years. It wants to prevent Iran from gaining a foothold and influence across the region. But in the past few days, it is believed to have operated in three neighboring countries, Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Netanyahu did say he gave his security forces a free hand to act in many arenas against an enemy state. 
Hezbollah says the drone attack, which damaged its media office, violated the 2006 ceasefire and changed the rules of engagement. But at the same time, the group is believed to have given Israel a chance not to escalate tensions. Hezbollah's message is to deter war. Nasrallah is telling the Israelis any war will be costly and we are not alone. So think twice. Iran promised to support any action Hezbollah takes against Israel, which doesn't seem to be backing down. It is believed to be behind strikes on a position belonging to a Palestinian faction allied to Iran along Lebanon's border with Syria early on Monday. There is a real danger. Further attacks by either side could escalate to war. Zena Khudr Al Jazeera, Beirut. Lisra <laughs> في المدن والقرى لتصوير الأعراس والحفلات لا هي طائرة عسكرية نظامية هلا بالحد الأدنى اللي عنا طول قريب المترين وصناعة عسكرية محترمة دخلت الطائرة الأولى في الليل إلى المنطقة المستهدفة اللي اسمه حي معوض في شارع معين بحي معوض في الضاحية الجنوبية الطائرة الأولى كانت طائرة استطلاع مهمتها استطلاعية لأنها غير مزودة بأي مواد تفجير وحلقت بشكل منخفض إلى حد أنه أصبحت بين البنايات وهذا يعني أنه هي عم تعطي صورة مشهد دقيق معين أو محاولة في إعطاء صورة دقيقة للهدف المقصود نحن كما قالت المصادر الإعلامية أو الجهات الإعلامية في حزب الله نحن لم نسقط الطائرة هذه ولكن شبان في الحي لأنه شافوا الطيارة طولة مترين وواطية وصايرة بين البنايات وهي الأمور قديش بنحكي بشفافية وبصدق بساعد على فهم لأنه الحقائق هي اللي بينبنى عليها مش الأوهام مش الاختراعات فبدأوا برمي الحجارة على هذه الطائرة وتم ووقع هلا وقعت نتيجة خلل فني وقعت نتيجة رمي الحجارة عليها لأنه هي أصيبت بأحد الحجارة وهذا واضح في بدن الطائرة طيب وقعت الطائرة بعد مدة زمنية بسيطة يعني دقيقة أكثر شوي دقيقتين جاءت الطائرة الثانية وبشكل هجومي وضربت مكانا معينا يعني مش أن الطيارة الثانية كانت عم تحلق وصار خلل وفجروها بالسماء لا ما حصل ليلة أمس هجوم بطائرة مسيرة انتحارية على هدف في الضاحية الجنوبية لبيروت في لبنان هذا التوصيف الدقيق المنطلق من الوقائع هذا الخرق إذا سكت عنه هذا سيؤسس لمسار خطير جدا على لبنان معناتها كل يومين ثلاثة بدها تطلع سيارة مفخخة، شو سيارة؟ <تصفيق> عفوا، بدها تطلع مسيرة مفخخة، مسيرة انتحارية تستهدف هذا المبنى وهذا المكان وهذه المزرعة وهذا البستان وهذا المسجد وهذا المجمع وتحت عنوان انه هي مسيرة والله اعلم من وين جاي. يعني تكرار لسيناريو العراق الذي يجري حاليا هلا من هون طالع خلي يسمعوني كل العالم منيح بنحكي حكي دقيق في سيناريو بالعراق بدا منذ اسابيع مخازن للحشد الشعبي مخازن الحشد الشعبي وفي محافظات مختلفه بتطلع مسيرات وشوي بيطلع انفجار هلا المسيره عم ترمي صاروخ او المسيره ذاتها عم تنزل هذا التحقيق ببينه طيب أول انفجار وثاني انفجار وثالث انفجار رابع انفجار مع تلميح إسرائيلي تلميح بالحد الأدنى إلى تحمل مسؤولية والمفاخرة لا العراقيين بدي تعاطوا معه الحكومة العراقية الجيش العراقي الحشد الشعبي الشعب العراقي هذا شأنهم وأنا لا أتدخل في قراراتهم لكن بالنسبة لنا في لبنان 
نحن لا نسمح بمسار من هذا النوع بمسار من هذا النوع هذا غير مسموح فيه وسنفعل أنتم عودين على الأدبيات وسنفعل كل شيء لمنع حصول مسار من هذا النوع كل شيء يمنع حصول مسار من هذا النوع سنقدم عليه انتهى الزمن التي تأتي فيه طائرات إسرائيلية تقصف في مكان في لبنان ويبقى الكيان الغاصب لفلسطين آمنا في أي منطقة من مناطق الكيان المسيرات الإسرائيلية التي تدخل إلى لبنان في نظرنا لم تعد مسيرات خرق سيادة لم تعد مسيرات جمع معلومات صارت مسيرات تفجير وعمليات انتحارية وعمليات قتل وبالتالي من حقنا هلا صار له علاقة بالإجراء يمكن مش كل يوم يمكن مش كل جمعة يمكن كل ساعة هذا له علاقة بالتكتيك صار بس أنا بشكل واضح جدا وبعرف في ناس حينزعجوا خلي ينزعجوا خلي ينزعجوا من الآن فصاعدا نحن سنواجه المسيرات الإسرائيلية في سماء لبنان المسيرات الإسرائيلية عندما تدخل إلى سماء لبنان سنعمل على إسقاطها أمس أغار السلاح الجو الإسرائيلي ليس على مركز لقوة القدس بل على مركز لحزب الله الذين كانوا في هذا الماء هو بيت حتى مو مو موقع عسكري بيت بيعدوا فيه الشباب مثل بيوت اللي بيرتاحوا فيه عادة هذا المكان الذي قصف لا يوجد فيه إلا شباب لبنانيون من حزب الله إذا قتلت إسرائيل أي من إخواننا إذا قتلت أي من إخواننا في سوريا نحن سنرد على هذا القتل في لبنان وليس في مزارع شبعة سنرد في لبنان وليس في مزارع شبعة وليس في مزارع شبعة أنا بقول للجيش الإسرائيلي على الحدود من الليلة وقاف على الحيط على إجر ونص وقاف على الحيط على إجر ونص وانطرنا جرت العادة عند الأحزاب الإسرائيلية أن تعمل انتخابات بدماء الفلسطينيين ودماء اللبنانيين والسوريين والعراقيين وشعوب المنطقة لكن أيها الإسرائيليون هذه المرة نتنياهو عم يعمل انتخابات بدمائكم أنتم عم يلعب بدمائكم أنتم عم يستجلب لكم النار من كل مكان ولا وشو له شغل بالعراق ليش بده يروح يستهدف مخازن الحشد الشعبي بالعراق هو يأتي بالنار العراقية إليكم ويأتي بالنار السورية إليكم وهو الآن يأتي بالنار اللبنانية إليكم أما النار الفلسطينية فهي قائمة بفعل حصاركم لغزة وعدوانكم على الضفة واستكباركم على الشعب الفلسطيني شمعت إتا دفعيم شل نصر الله أنا متسيء لنصر الله ليراجع ويدعى فمود شمدينة إسرائيل يدعات لأجن على تسمع التيف ولأشيف لأشيف لأيذاك يجمولام
Lebanese President Michel Aoun says the Sunday Israeli drone strikes in the country amount to a declaration of war. Aoun said Lebanon has the right to defend its sovereignty in the face of Israel's attacks. He also told the UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon that Tel Aviv's assault violated a UN resolution that ended the 2006 war between his country and Israel. Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri also reiterated that the Israeli strikes were a clear violation of Lebanon's sovereignty. On Sunday, two Israeli drones crashed in a suburb of Beirut. One of them fell on the roof of a building home to the media center of the resistance movement Hezbollah, causing severe damage. And later, Israeli drones attacked Lebanon's Baqa region near the border with Syria. Our correspondent in Beirut, Maryam Saleh, says President Michel Aoun's description of the Israeli drone strikes as a declaration of war clearly shows he backs Hezbollah's call for a response. The declaration made by President Michel Aoun is clearly uh, taken from a head of state uh, who understands, of course, the circumstances of war. He was a general of the Lebanese army um, back in the 80s and, uh, and 90s, and so he has a and he has a long history of uh, knowledge of the Israeli aggressions and their policies of aggression against Lebanon. And he is clearly backing um, Hezbollah in their stance and the need to respond when they feel that they need to respond. As Said Nasrallah said that uh, he is, of course, he's accusing uh, Benjamin Netanyahu because of the coming up, upcoming elections, that he is trying to play with the blood of the Israelis. And this is probably what he's trying to do. There's a lot of provocation today. Um, there was a vi viol continuous violation of Lebanese airspace today in Beirut, in the south, in the Baqa, uh, by either drones, by uh, unmanned airplanes. So uh, the Israelis are trying to provoke. However, on the border, you don't see any movement for any uh, any uh, any Israeli soldier, uh, you don't see any sort of military vehicle whatsoever. Um, but uh, the drones have not stopped. And Hezbollah, as in one of their tactics, is usually to wait for the right time. And they don't like the Israelis to choose the time. So the Israelis are probably provoking a certain uh, uh, timing for uh, Hezbollah because they understand that Hezbollah has a lot of um, and surprises in there. In their, in their pocket. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. Israel, over the past week or so, has been bombing, it seems, all of its neighbors in the region. Uh, Iraq, Lebanon, uh, tell me more, uh, Syria as well. Yes, uh, and it's, uh, of course, uh, not something that's unusual for Israel to be doing. We have from France 24 here. Israeli airstrikes hit Lebanon a day after Beirut drone crash. Of course, uh, we have to break this down and put this all in perspective. Uh, last night, we saw an attack upon the Beka, a uh, PFLP general command uh, center by an Israeli drone, uh, we're told, according to Lebanese media. And this followed what happened the day before. It's in, we have to break this down because the Israelis put out their narrative trying to make themselves into the victim. Like you just noted, Israel in the past few days has attacked Iraq, violating its sovereignty, Syria, violating its sovereignty, Lebanon, violating its sovereignty, and of course the besieged uh, coastal enclave we know as the Gaza Strip. There's also been uh, talk that they might even be targeting Yemen next. I mean, where's it going to end, Rob? Yes, and that is a great question. And uh, see, this sort of... Uh, conversation is not being had on the media and the international community is not holding Israel responsible for its actions. I mean, it attacked the Damascus International Airport. It did not attack, we have to be very clear, it did not attack Iranian targets inside of, uh, of Syria. It attacked Hezbollah and Syrian Arab army targets. And that's what it was targeting. Then it attacked Lebanon, violated its sovereignty with suicide drones, and it sure. is aggressing against all fronts. And like this is you, something uh, that like has to you be discussed. Say, like you say, this isn't very unprecedented either in the history of uh, Israel and its aggression towards its neighbors. What social media is saying, Rob? So the first tweet we have here is from Marwa Osman, who is uh, from Lebanon herself, yep. who says, in the past 24 hours, Israel bombed Iraq, Syria, Gaza, and a couple of hours back, it also bombed Lebanon Beka targeting a PFLP position. Israel is literally begging to be wiped off the map. 
Yalla, target Iran as well so we can all take part in the liberation of Palestine. Very impassioned response there. We also have a tweet from uh, Leif who weighs in on this. Seems the Zionists are itching for war. Apartheid Israel attacks PFLP GC General Command base in Bekaa Valley, East Lebanon, less than 24 hours from attacking resistance in Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. Well, uh, let's see how it goes. Obviously, um, we got a tweet there from uh, Mawa Osman, who's in Lebanon. You know, she's on the front lines there. And I think th her comments from that tweet, a very passionate tweet there, mm -hmm. really highlights just how the feeling is in that region. <laughs> Bizarre, I'm